Times. And joining me now is Congressman Adam Schiff of California, chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. And, and thank you so much for being here, um, Congressman Schiff. I want to alert you and remind you of, and I'm sure that you're aware of it, back seemingly 147 years ago, the Senate Intelligence Committee, your counterparts in the Senate, issued criminal referrals um, for Donald Trump Jr., Steve Bannon, Jared Kushner, and two others. And they made those referrals to federal prosecutors. And they made these criminal referrals in a letter to the U.S. Attorney's Office of Washington, D.C. This was in June of 2019. One section of the letter raised concerns about the testimony that Donald Trump Jr. and Kushner had given, which contradicted the testimony of one Rick Gates. What do you make of those referrals? And can you just explain to us what that means and whether that might be why Donald Trump is contemplating pardons for them? Well, I can't speak specifically to what the Senate Intelligence Committee may have referred, but I can tell you we made similar referrals uh, in the case of Roger Stone, in the case of Eric Prince, where people came before our committee uh, and we had good reason to believe, based on the testimony and evidence that we collected, that they had lied under oath uh, and that they should be considered for a potential uh, prosecution for perjury or, or making a false statement. So it may very well be referrals along those lines. Uh, but look, I think the president uh, has probably broader fears than that about his children. Uh, there are any number of reported investigations, uh, some state, some federal, uh, in which uh, he may be concerned that they're facing uh, you know, criminal liability. And he's obviously concerned about himself uh, from the press reporting that he would even go so far as to consider trying to pardon himself somehow. But uh, look, this is the nature of those the president has surrounded himself with, including his family. Uh, and that is, uh, it's been essentially a den of thieves, and thieves environment. Uh, and so I think the president views this as his way of trying to protect those that have protected him. So just to break this down just to, into two pieces. First of all, you're a former prosecutor. We know that there have been clemencies issued by previous presidents, including President Obama, for instance, to send a message, you know, pardoning multiple and sometimes, you know, hundreds of people who had been convicted of, let's say, drug crimes, to send the message that we shouldn't be putting people in prison for life for selling marijuana, right? And so that's a statement pardon. But they did, even if they were guilty of it, it's something they shouldn't be in jail for life for, that kind of a pardon. Have you ever heard of somebody getting a preemptive pardon who was is innocent of all crime, who's just an innocent person. Have you ever heard of that, just somebody getting a blanket pardon and they're an innocent person? Well, no. You know, I think that uh, in the cases, the very few cases where there have been prospective pardons, uh, such as, uh, you know, a Ford pardoning Nixon for whatever he may have done during the presidency, there was some idea of the potential criminal liability facing Richard Nixon. Uh, you know, here it's an effort uh, not only to prospectively pardon people for things they have not yet been charged with and may never be charged with, but also it's the president's own family. Uh, it's uh, people that have been covering up for the president uh, in addition to his own family. Uh, in the case of Roger Stone, it's someone who lied to help cover up, or Michael Flynn, who lied to help cover up. Uh, and so there is a self-interest at play as well. Uh, and I think that makes this quite unique. Uh, you know, there were accusations um, when uh, President Bush uh, conveyed a pardon to Casper Weinberger that uh, the special counsel there thought that might have been ever by then President Bush uh, to cover up, but nothing of the scale and scope of what Donald Trump uh, has already done and is contemplating in the future. Yeah, and the cover-up general is what they used to call uh, William Barr because he advised uh, George Herbert Walker Bush to pardon people, which uh, Casper, which uh, interrupted those Iran-Contra um, uh, proceedings. The second question would be: Let's say that Donald Trump tried to pardon himself. How would that be refuted? Is that a case where who would be the party that would object to that, and how would that objection play out and potentially wind up in the Supreme Court? Uh, it would play out this way. Uh, let's say that the Southern District of New York uh, indicted individual number one, who is known to be the president of the United States, uh, in a campaign fraud scheme that the Southern District has already charged, uh, individual one coordinated and directed, the same one that Michael Cohen went to jail for. Um, the lawyers for President Trump would argue that the case should be dismissed because the president pardoned himself. Um, the prosecutors would obviously contest that. 
Uh, and if the president were convicted, uh, there would be an appeal uh, on that basis, or there may be an effort to even thwart the prosecution. Uh, and it would make its way up through the courts, and ultimately the Supreme Court would decide. I have to think they would decide you can't pardon yourself. Uh, along the lines of the yeah. Office of Legal Counsel opinion from the early 1970s, it would make you the judge in your own case. It would put you above the, the law. Uh, and more than that, it would allow a president of the United States to effectively nullify whole other sections of the Constitution because he could simply pardon himself after encouraging other people to engage in illegality. And the Constitution, as our justices have written, is not a suicide pact. To interpret it that way would make it into a suicide pact. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you for explaining that. That was my biggest question. I really appreciate it. And then we should also note that the other case in which you can see a pardon that makes actual sense is if somebody is actually innocent and was accused of something they didn't do, that makes sense as well. That's not what Donald Trump appears to be alleging. He seems well, to and, think and, that, and also I don't know, whatever where, he thinks. Where someone has shown that they have made restitution, they have repented, uh, yeah. you know, they've lived a, a good life since their conviction, done other notable things. There are good and legitimate reasons for pardons. It doesn't appear that any of those yeah. are motivating this president.